Well, hello again. Uh, this video, as I said in the last video, we were going to change out the wheel cylinders, or brake cylinders, whichever you want to call it, and the master cylinder. I've also decided to do one other thing. Uh, I was just going to go ahead and, you know, put, release the springs, and then separate the two shoes, pull out the wheel cylinder, and remove the uh, rusty brake line. It goes back that way and replace all of it. But what I've decided to do is completely strip down the entire setup and remove this back plate. This back plate on both sides is severely rusted. So now's the time, you know, I, give me a chance to clean the whole thing up. I'll clean the springs, we'll clean the shoes, we'll clean everything. Now, in the past, I've taken both sides off. When I was first learning, I'd take both sides off and then couldn't remember how to get it back together. <laughs> Well, don't do what I did when I first started out. Do one wheel, and then you always have the other wheel to look at in case you can't remember how it goes back together. And then once you get it back together, then you go ahead and do the other side. And again, you can always refer back to the first one if you still forget. So we're going to go ahead and clean all this mess up, except for this. Now, this is the axle. We're going to go ahead and clean everything up, and I'm going to soak those uh, back plates and vinegar for a few days and see if we can't get them painted up and looking halfway decent. This stuff here is just basically a good clean should take care of that. You can see I already rubbed a lot of it off my finger just then. But I think this entire setup is going to look so much better when we're done. You know, in the last video, we accomplished quite a bit. We did a lot, getting the gas tank up and all that jazz. But what drew the most attention to everybody and the, and the, the most comments? was this stupid filler tube getting the rust out of it. <laughs> it surprised me to no end. I got a million different ways of how I could remove that rust, Be, you know, besides the way I'm doing it. I agree. I knew there was a million different ways. Probably the best idea I heard of all, though, was to take a piece of PVC pipe, you know, seal the bottom end with a cap and glue it on. Then just, you know, the, the PVC pipe would have to be the entire length of this. You don't need one really big, but, you know, big enough to fit around that flange right there in the end and then just fill it up with uh, vinegar and plunge it down in there and set it off in a corner somewhere and which we may still do I like that idea best of all there was also uh, another one which was uh, a cheap way to do it which now Brendan he's always accusing me of, well, he, not always just recently he's accusing me of cheaping out on some things <laughs> You know, I call it a reallocation of funding. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, you could take a, a cardboard box and uh, line it with a plastic, uh, you know, trash bag and then fill it with vinegar and lay that down in there and maybe roll it around every so often. That's another good idea. It's a cheap way of doing it. You, know, you don't have to buy the PVC pipe and the glue and all that crap. Anyway, we're going to keep working at it. It seems to be really de-rusting very well, just the way I'm doing it. But you never know what the future is going to bring. I appreciate all the comments, guys. And, you know, there again, there's probably a million more ideas we haven't even thought of. I've already taken a turkey baster and extracted all the fluid that was in the master cylinder. And uh, stuck it in this jar. And then I wiped it out with a rag, nice and dry. And it's in here. One of our subscribers said, you know, instead of going with a single outlet or a single reservoir uh, master cylinder... Uh, why not go with a you know a, a dual chamber type? I understand all that you know 100%. Uh, I always thought the dual chambers were the safest. If you, one gets empty, you always have the other one. It's, a, it's sort of a backup system for a backup system. Kind of neat. Unfortunately, right now it's not in the budget. Secondly, it would take all new tubing. I'd have to run all new uh, brake lines uh, to do that and I'm not I'm not prepared to do that right now if that happens Maybe at a later date. Maybe you can buy the entire thing in a kit later on. I don't know But we'll see great idea It's always good to have a separate reservoir for the back brakes and a separate reservoir for the front when they came out with that I thought that was pretty neat, but all of that being said I have never had any problem with a single reservoir single outlet master cylinder And I've driven a lot of cars over the years that had that type of setup we have removed everything from the backing plate on the one side of the car. All the brakes and everything are off. The uh, emergency brake is hanging down there. And this brake line right here is disconnected, hanging. We're going to be removing that all the way across. We're going to put brand new in there. Let's take a look at our uh, wheel cylinder outside in the sun a little bit, even though it's hot out there. 
but uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll set up the saw horses we'll do it on the table set up a little table out there but you can see how nasty this thing was pretty bad shape so let's take a look at let's peel the rubber caps back and see what we've got so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got these definitely needed to be oh my goodness look at that look at that yeah they were new a while back but they sure rusted up that's what happens when a car sits look at that can't even move that thing that's a that's a the end of a plunger let's look at the other side this is no good this is what you look for Ooh, look at that crap well anybody want to argue about whether or not we needed to change these wheel cylinders All right, now that we know we made the right decision to get rid of those wheel cylinders, now what I want to do is I want to take this backing plate off, clean it, de-rust it, paint it, and put it back. Which is, you know, a little bit uh, more of a problem than just saying. Uh, now there's this, there is, there are four bolts back here. One, two, and there's two on the bottom on a square plate. And they hold the wheel bearing in, or the uh, axle retainer plate with these bolts and this hole right here is there so I can get to each one of them. I can rotate it, take one nut off, go to the next one, take the nut off and go around and then when I'm all done I can pull out the entire axle which will enable the plate to come off. Now you can't always do that in all cars. Some of the old cars had a retainer pin or a clip or some sort of a gizmo over in the differential that kept the axle from uh, coming out you had to open it up remove it all and then you could get the axle out But this one here is supposed to be able to slide out Once I get those four bolts off Grab a hold of it. There's a tool, you know, but I think we might be you know a tool you you put on here sort of like a Sort of like a wheel puller type of affair to pull it out Which you know we may have to resort to something like that it won't be a problem, but this backing plate is a mess This is this is horrible. I don't like it. I want it clean. I want it squared away and I think you'll agree with me once we get it off and get her cleaned up and make her look good. Once the four nuts are off, uh, this plate, I stuck a screwdriver behind this plate here and this plate will move back and forth. See it? On those nuts, you got to get that off of there if you want that axle to come out because it'll wedge if you don't. I only need to get the axle out in order to get the plate off. That's all. Otherwise, I wouldn't even bother taking it off. And I know Brendan's sitting out there saying, I don't believe he's doing this. <laughs> but that's okay. I am a paranoid kind of guy. I admit it. We're going to make it look really pretty. Now, this is what's called a slide hammer. It's a heavy weight on a rod. I borrowed it from O'Reilly's Auto. All your auto parts store have a loaner program. You go in, you know, you give them, uh, I think it was $72 for this as a uh, deposit. In case I decide to never bring it back, you know, it'll belong to me for $72. Bucks. I'm sorely tempted not to take it back, but I don't have a, a, you know, extended use for this sort of thing. There's a ball on the end that this thing hits against, okay, when you slide it back and forth. And I've got it hooked to that round flange there with just one bolt. This thing it was not designed for an American, an older American car. So all I could get was one... Uh, uh, bolt through here and I use my vice grip to hold the other side okay and now you don't have to slam this thing you know wham 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 you don't do that it's just a tapping you tap 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 and the, after you've got your bolts loose like I've already showed you then the axle will just come right out as long as it's the kind it doesn't have that clip or pin or retaining nut or bolt or whatever inside the uh, differential so let's go ahead and just tap it a little bit and see what happens a little tap. There she goes. There it is. It's already out. Okay. I thought to be able. That's already out. It's out of the bearing. There's a bearing behind there. We got her all loose. So I should be able to just pull it right on out by hand. Now this thing is actually a two-piece setup. You have to get the puller separate from the slide hammer. Okay. They come in two different boxes. So just don't think when you get a slide hammer you're going to get a puller with it unless it's all in one kit. You're not going to get it that way. So I'll go ahead and uh, take it back now. I've only borrowed it for about 15 minutes. That's all it took. So I'll go in the house, have a cup of coffee, I think, cool down a little bit, and then I'll just run it on back and get my money back. Because, you know, you, you put your, uh, this was like $72, $73, like I said. Put it on my debit card, and then when I take it back, they put it back in the bank.
piece of cake. All right, let's see if I can now slide it the rest of the way out. Yes, I can. Look at that. Nothing to it. Okay. We'll consider this job done. Uh, the next uh, segment will have the plate off. It'll slide completely off once I get the axle out. All right, all the parts that we took off the wheel I put in this box right here. Look how nasty that was on the back side of that thing. Isn't that incredible? And then this side. This side's not too bad. That's where the brakes were, but... On the back side, that's a mess. We're gonna have to power wash all that and we're gonna spray down and clean all the rest you see down there and get it nice and spotless. Now, this is your rear axle. For those of you who don't know, you've never seen a real a rear axle, they got a spline on the end here. Let's see if I can get it over here away from the sun. There we go. I think this is better. You got a spline here on the end that fix up, fits up into that uh, differential into a, uh, a hole that also has splines. And this is your axle, and right down here is, this is called your your wheel bearing, your axle bearing, okay? It's a load type bearing. It's a load bearing bearing, I guess is what you say. Now this thing is nice and smooth, I'm surprised. No grit, smooth, it turns nice and smooth and easy. I don't feel any grit whatsoever, so I'd say that thing is still in pretty good shape. Now we're going to clean it up a little bit. Now this is the kind of bearing you can't repack. Uh, I guess unless you're some kind of a sadist, you know, you just got to pull this off and then pull the bearing off and press the new one on. It's a big job, actually, which I really don't want to do. So I'm very happy to see that that's nice and smooth. Operates great, okay? And, but we're still going to kind of clean it up best we can. I'm not going to get a bunch of water and crap down in here. I'll wipe it out with a, a brush and, uh, you know, just do whatever I can. But over here is our big problem. This, this mess here has got to go. All right, let's see what we can do with this thing. See how clean we can get it. I got the old power washer hooked up. It's early in the morning, but that's the coolest part of the day. I'm gonna have to get it done now. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Boy, that stuff is on there. Woo -wee. I'm going to have to do some scraping, I guess. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let it just bake in the sun for a while. Then we'll take a brush and some, uh, probably some mineral spirits or paint thinner or something. We'll go ahead and clean that baby up real good. Then we'll plunge it down in the uh, vinegar for a couple of days. Meanwhile, I need to get out of the sun. This is horrendous out here already. What I'm going to do is take the rest of these uh, small parts, not the brake shoes, put the brake shoes over here. Incidentally, for those that don't know, the entire metal part of this is the brake shoe. What you see right here, this is the brake lining, the lining, okay? And this one here is riveted on. Uh, I'm not too crazy about riveted. Uh, some people say they're great. I like the bonded linings which were cemented onto this metal with some kind of a really strong adhesive or put on with heat. I'm not really certain what the process was to, to bond those linings onto the metal, but these are called riveted linings, you'll notice. Also, one more thing, might as well, now my hands are dirty, I might as well point it out. You'll notice that uh, this brake shoe here, or this brake lining, let me put these two linings up where you can see them. You'll notice that these two linings are different lengths. See how this one comes up and ends right there, and then this one goes all the way around from one end to the other? This is your front lining. This is your back lining. All right, and there's a reason for that, because one uh, is needed more to stop a car than the other. And uh, that's why also this one here is worn down. This one hits first, I believe, and then this one hits second. Uh, I think that's the way it goes. I'm not 100% sure which one hits first, but I know that this is your front lining with your... Now, I don't know if it's like that on all cars. I'm just talking about the Thunderbird right now. This is a thinner lining than this one. It's been worn thin because it braked uh, first and more. So, just a little something to tickle your innards with that. Now, what I'm going to do here, all these little loose parts and everything, we're going to stick them down inside this bottle of uh, paint thinner. That's right. Just gonna stick it down in there, put the cap on it. Every once in a while, I'll come out and shake the you know what out of it. So let me get that done. 
All right, everything that would fit in there has fit in there. Only the very large pieces. I'm going to add a little paint thinner to this thing. I want to fill it up all the way. Cover up every one of those pieces. I'm just going to let them soak for two, three days. I'm in no rush. You know, no rush. Because since we received what I needed to get started back on our jukebox in yesterday's mail, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to halt this video right here and go out there and Mess around in a nice air-conditioned shop for a while because, boy, I'll tell you, I'm dying. I am dying. Look how dark that is already. Why bust your hump? Let something else do the cleaning for you, okay? I'll tell you what, before we uh, head into the shop to work on the jukebox, I'm just going to go ahead and power wash what's left here with the exception of one small item that's still in the cardboard box. I, I'll, have to clean, I'll have to clean this baby. This is the uh, adjuster your uh, auto, auto adjuster uh, cable hookup setup, I think. Anyway, let's go ahead and just power wash this stuff clean because I really don't want to come back out in the sun and put all this stuff up. We'll get it all done, get everything put back, the power washer and the electrical cord and hose and everything. Then I can sit in the AC all day. Well, I just decided to hang them on the fence and give them a good blast on both sides, get all as much of that gook off as we can. Keep in mind, we're still going to spray it with the brake cleaner. Some of you might ask, well, you know, spraying this with a power washer on those things, won't, won't it hurt them, won't it mess them up? Well, I'll tell you what, guys, if a little bit of water messes these brake shoes up, I don't want them on my car. Get my drift. After I went ahead and power washed this thing and, and uh, got it all, you know, as much as I could, I scraped it with a screwdriver and helped it a lot. Then I went ahead and I stuck it in a container, this container right here. Just stuck it down in there like this fits pretty good then I just poured some uh, paint stripper all over it with a brush smeared it all around smeared it all around then I flipped it over did the same thing to the back just smeared it all over did a whole lot of whole lot of smearing on that lots of let me see the paint thinner I used let me show you the kind I got it worked really well it was this stuff here Jasco I had never used that before, got it at Lowe's. This stuff really works good. It's uh, Not only does it remove paint, but it removes epoxy, so I figured that would really do the job. I had it laying around. And I let it sit for about uh, six hours. Just smeared everywhere. Every once in a while, I'd come out with a brush and dip it down in there and smear it around again, flip it over, smear it around. And at the end of six hours, I went ahead and washed it all down with the hose, and that's the result. All looking nice and clean so far, although we have all that rust. Now, of course, what do we do with it now? Well, <laughs> well the old vinegar treatment. That's why I got this uh, vinegar right here. I'm going to let this baby sit for about, you know, probably, it's got quite a bit of rust on it. It's probably going to have to sit for about a week. With no problem at all. It's just like, well, how about that? It's going to cover the entire thing. That's nice. Nice, nice. Okay, just like that. I may have to add just a little bit more. I don't know. Let me see. If I put it down this way, yeah, that covers a lot better. Okay, we'll come back to that baby in about a week. Now, I may have to, like I said, add a little bit more because this metal part here is a little bit sticking out. All right, speaking of vinegar, uh, it's time to take these rags out of this tube. They've been in there for several days. And I also put some bolts down in here that hold those plates on that we de-rusted. Oh man, look at that. Look how clean those bolts are. I'm real happy about that. The nuts got a little bit of... I think these nuts are what hold the shocks on, the bottom of the shocks. But the bolts themselves, we'll leave that in there a little while longer. We'll go ahead and take these bolts out. They look really nice. Alright, we'll take the bolts out and then I'm going to take some of this vinegar and pour it in there and basically top it off and then we'll cover it with some plywood and just let it sit for days on end until I'm happy with it, okay? We're in no big rush. Now the vinegar that I've been soaking in is the uh, Heinz brand and uh, the new one I bought the other day, they didn't have any more of this Heinz at Walmart, so I went ahead and bought a Walmart brand vinegar. I don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know how strong it is. I know this stuff is pretty rough. And if you got a cut in your finger and you stick it down in there, boy, it, it burns. Anyway, I'm still, I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. It'll help it for sure. 
Then we'll go ahead and pull the rags out of here and see what the center of the tube looks like. Well, the rags sure got nasty dirty with rust, but yeah, the inside of the tube is not what I expected it to be. Not exactly the way it should be. You can see kind of down in there. I don't know if you can make out the rust, but there's still rust down in there. So I guess we're going to have to resort to the old PVC pipe trick that one of our subscribers, I think a couple of them recommended it. No, I think one recommended that. So I appreciate him bringing that up. I'll take a trip to Lowe's tomorrow, get me a little short piece of pipe. We'll fill it up with the remaining uh, vinegar we have in this, you know, I'll just buy a brand new vinegar thing. And then we'll just fill it up and cap it off and let that sit right alongside the, uh, the, the backing plate for the brakes. And uh, we got one more thing to do and then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Alright, the final thing for today is uh, these four bolts here and these four bolts here are what hold the top shock brackets to the body of the car underneath. We're going to go ahead and give a light coat of uh, paint. I don't want these things to be rusting. I don't know how long it's going to be before I can actually get a, you know the shocks back on the car. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of up in the air about what to do about that, but we'll figure it out sooner or later. We're going to have to do something, but right now the the deal is to get the uh, brakes done. So next time uh, we'll go ahead and hopefully get the brakes back on the one side of the car. And then, uh, you know, put the, the drum back on. I want to also de-rust the drum. And that'll probably be done mostly by wire brush and, you know, wire brush on a drill. I'm not going to soak any, you know, the drum in any vinegar or anything. I kind of hope to have that painted by the next time uh, we meet on the Thunderbird and then I want to remove those two brake lines that go to each back wheel and we're going to have to head downtown see if I can find some brake line uh, I don't think you can buy ready-made brake lines for that if anybody knows let me know uh, but I want to go back down and go back downtown to O'Reilly and see if I can't find some <clears throat> some of those soft bendable brake lines and make my own by the way by the way I have a request for you folks and since there's more of you than there are of me, underneath the bumper is a left-handed white thing and a right-handed white thing. They're called valances, V-A-L-A-N-C-E. There's also a center valance, and on this car it's missing. Now, I don't know if the 64 or 65 will fit. I don't know if it's the same kind of valance as the 66. I doubt it. So if anybody knows where I can pick up a reasonably priced center valance, for this car I'd appreciate it I have purchased a new eyebrow for the headlight that new eyebrow being this thing right here this one's also this thing's gonna have to come off but it comes around like this and then it goes you see it goes straight down like so right there but anyway I bought it I bought a set of those uh, on eBay they wanted 80 bucks for new ones I said that's just not gonna happen not gonna happen I was able to pick up a couple of used ones. Uh, he said they needed re-chroming. Well, heck, so does that one over there. Guy said they needed re-chroming, but they're usable. Yeah, I got both of them shipping and all for 20 bucks. I can live with that. So anyway, until next time, I appreciate you being here once again. This is John.